Thanks, Vic. Can visualization of health information coupled with good storytelling change behavior? And we are actually of the mind that it can. And I'm going to show you how we intend to actually proceed with this. Um, we are launching in January the nine visual rules of wellness, which we've been working on for the last two years, very closely with my very good friend and partner over here, Deepak Chopra. And what we're going to be doing is, I'm just going to walk you through it actually pretty quickly, rather than just sort of say, you know, what is it about? The thing is that visuals allow you to get it. It's quite simple. I mean, do, can I see it? Can I get it? What's the first phase of getting it when you're talking about your wellness? Well, the first phase is sort of understanding how well am I? And, the, and that means I need to baseline myself. And that starts to go into, do I have to get a physical? What do my blood tests mean? All of these things that we sort of avoid in a somewhat abstract, we are, the first rule is going to create a kind of a health center e-booklet that will explain every aspect of what it means to get a physical. And the physical will also go into what your blood tests are. But the problem is with most of these blood tests is that they are, again, abstract. What does it mean when I get my kidney blood test? I don't understand most of these. They're hieroglyphics. So here in this test, we can go and say, OK, they're going to do um, you know, a glomerular filtration rate. You get a little story, a little test about what is. And then what we're doing is going to launch you right into immediately a new way of looking at your lab reports. It's going to be a working closely with Surya Mohapatra at uh, Quest Diagnostics, who was very generous to underwrite an educational grant to put a new kind of lab report together where it explains to you, depending on where you are, every part of the lab test. It even shows you what kind of molecules, the demographics that you're in, and it, te it teaches you, you know, what does this biomarker? Here in these kidneys, you have millions of nephrons. Inside is a beautiful glomerulus that are sort of filtering. And then inside those, this filtration rate is sort of seeing where the proteins are coming out and whether you're in danger. These kinds of little stories that will explain to you very, very quickly what these tests mean. And then if you want to learn about why do I have to have these tests? How are they done? What do they mean? This will be explained in great detail so that now the lab reports in every aspect of understanding the fundamentals about yourself will be explained. Now, we wanted to take it even, you can search it, go into an LDL. The LDL molecule, when it goes into the danger zone, atherosclerosis. We can go up here and take a look at the, the biomarker information, tell you little stories about poor habits, again, in the bloodstream, little stories, but more importantly, these stories have a meaning that you may want a further description about. So what we're doing is we're building intelligent engines into all of this kind of information to go back and then educate you about atherosclerosis, about any one of the disease or conditions that you get flagged on. It all begins in your liver, where your body makes two kinds of cholesterol, HDL, or good cholesterol, and LDL, the bad. LDL does its damage by sticking to the inner walls of the arteries, while HDL can even clear out existing blockages. But when too much LDL builds up, it accumulates as plaques that stiffen and constrict the arteries. This condition is called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is, is literally a, a term that means hardening of the arteries or building up of plaque, if you will. And, and you hear a lot of patients that talk about, my, my dad died of hardening of the arteries. And that's really what the term means, atherosclerosis, it means hardening of the arteries. So how does it happen? Conditions like high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, and smoking can seriously compromise the integrity of your blood vessels. The blood vessels themselves are are uh, dynamic pipes. They're not static. They're constantly reinventing themselves. The inner lining of these vessels is smooth as glass. It's a surface that's called intima or endothelium. And it's constantly repairing itself against the sheer forces of pressure and blood. If you damage those cells, the body wants to heal it. How does the body heal? It heals by bringing cholesterol in, which is the plaster of our bodies. The cholesterol combines with other fats, cells, platelets, and calcium, which result in a buildup of hard plaque on the inside walls of the vessels. Over time, this plaque can clog vessels to the point where no blood can get through. Or pieces of the plaque can form a thrombus or clot, which can travel to the brain as an embolus to cause a stroke or to the heart to cause a heart attack. 
If a doctor detects the blockage, there are different treatment options. One is to receive an angioplasty, where the narrowed or obstructed blood vessel is widened with a wire mesh stent. If the blockage is too widespread to be repaired by angioplasty, the patient may be a candidate for a bypass graft surgery, where the blood flow is rerouted around the blocked artery with a vessel from another part of the body. Atherosclerosis can be controlled or prevented by reducing high blood pressure, quitting smoking, maintaining a healthy diet, and keeping your cholesterol in check. Your liver makes about 75% of your cholesterol. The rest comes from the foods you eat. So avoiding high cholesterol and fatty foods will go a long way. The optimal cholesterol level is 200 or less, with the LDL being less than 100 and the HDL being more than 60. Doctors often prescribe cholesterol-lowering medications, such as statins, to bring the LDL down to a safe level. Exercise is also important. It not only keeps the weight down and reduces stress, which contribute to heart disease, but it also helps to lower the bad LDL cholesterol while increasing the good HDL cholesterol. So you have an entire health center here now that explains to you about the marvel of how you're made when things go wrong, and most importantly, solutions. You know, it's all in story format. I mean, we really believe it's story. It's story that gives a soul to data. As they say, no one's life has ever been changed by a pie chart. You know, we, we, we live, in a live in a kind of a linear narrative world. And these are the kinds of things that we want to understand more clearly. But one of the things we were sitting here saying is that we're explaining to you about lifeblood. What about your lifeblood? The idea is when I get my lab reports back. So what we've built is, that we're releasing again in January, is a new way of actually looking at all of your results, Try, kind of coming up with kind of an iTunes of your lab reports. You'll be able to actually do longitudinal studies, trending, your radiological reports using our proprietary 3D technology. You'll be able to actually see your own scans in 3D. You'll be able to select and take a look at your, your, your data over, a his, you know, over history time. And, and the thing is that all this information, if I want to take a look at it and say, what does my data mean to me? I can now come down and say, wow, ooh, blood urea, nitrogen, flag, what does it mean? I can double click it and I can go to that center and what will happen is that we'll, within, we're building intelligence engines that will then again bring you to a place that will educate you about this information. It will be about your lifeblood integrated into this information so that the linear narrative will be about you. So this information is, that's only the first rule of wellness that we'll be releasing. Then we're going on to, from there, on to uh, the third rule, nutrition. Here's an orange, one of the things that we're doing, this is one of our largest parts of the entire program. Six weeks, uh, this was a generous um, grant, uh, educational grant from Al Carey and Frito-Lay and working with some of the scientists from Mehmood Khan who's gonna be in the next session doing some great stuff. But one of the things we wanted to do was show you by actually we scanned all the objects that you can see here. We wanted to show you how does this turn into this? How do we actually, how does a nutrient become a part of our body? For example, when you're talking about calcium and vitamin D, what does it do to us? And the thing is that here, as we started to scan objects to show you, uh, in the case of calcium, you can actually see the trabriculi just basically melting away over a period of time because of the lack of nutrition. These kinds of things are, I wanna see them. I wanna see how this indeed affects my body. So similar to the biomarker library that we created, we created the largest nutritional library ever created to sort of show you what every one of these nutrients actually does to your body. Creating a kind of a visceral visual experience that not only explains to you how it builds your body, but then gives you great detailed information. And we expect this to be used by every nutritionist, anyone who wants to actually get on a program and understand why they're actually taking these foods. And, here, for example, free radicals. You've got a pomegranate in an MRI machine, and you're sitting here saying heart health or cell structure or eye health. Why does this, how does this work? What is, you know, you hear these words free radical antioxidants, they, they use in the American vernacular constantly. But here you get a little beautiful description using the real molecules from the protein data bank at the NIH, showing you how basically you take this thing as burning holes into membranes of cells and how you're sort of like extinguishing it by just giving an electron from one of the antioxidants. Every aspect of nutrition, every part of this thing will be explained in great detail. 
Here, for example, we've scanned, you know, cabbage and vegetables and fruits. We've even used micro CT scans to actually show seeds that you're eating to show you what's inside them, to show you how they affect your body. Um, birth defects, neural tube defects here, one of the most important and one of the number one uh, defects uh, among, uh, in births, you know, folate. B9, B12, from these kinds of foods that, you know, you can see, you can viscerally understand why is it that I must have that nutrient in my body at that stage of my life. Going on to exercise. So I'm just showing you tiny samples. This is a fraction or a fraction or a fraction of what we're going to be launching in January. This is the molecule BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. It was discovered by uh, scientists at Rockefeller University in the 1980s. It is miracle growth for your brain. It is this molecule that actually makes new neurons and optimizes synaptogenesis and optimizes you know, learning and the growth of, uh, um, of new dendritic ends. And the number one reason you make it is aerobic exercise. What happens from anaerobic exercise? Well, everyone's always talking about it, but it's always so abstract. But this is what happens. When you take a look at here are the mitochondria inside your cell. These are the furnaces that actually are burning the sugar and burning the fats. And there are a thousand times more mitochondria in a single muscle cell than there are in a fat cell. So when you're lying down, you're just burning everything that you've eaten off. And this is the, here's the nucleus, and here's the nucleus. So you can clearly see, it's, it's that kind of thing where people keep on talking about your basal metabolic rate, and it's all abstract and obtuse. This is the kind of thing where you sit here saying, I finally get it. We have now created protocols. We are putting people through programs using the nine visual rules of wellness. And we have actually reduced people's biomarkers by up to three decades in four months using the nine rules. And we're going to actually be building these kinds of programs, nutrition, exercise, coupled with the program where you can actually see. And you can see what happens to the body. Take a look at this part. You see the, the lung down with the once the fat comes in, it just crushes the organs, and of course, that visceral fat is toxic. These are the kinds of things that give you an epiphany. We, we call it the holy shit, I finally get it moment, you know? <laughs> Actually, we call it the holy shit wellness series. <laughs> but this is, you know, it is simple, but it's quite elegant when you actually follow the simple data. The day you're born, you know, one to two days, your si the stomach is the size of a chickpea. Three to six days later. Sometimes it's a simple story of these kinds of, you know, analogies. The three to six days, it's the size of a grape. One to six months, you're the size of a strawberry. Six months to a year, the size of a grapefruit. Then after an adult, uh, the size of a cantaloupe. As we get older, as we're trying to teach you about moderation, this is the size of your stomach. What happens if people binge eat? They throw, them, they throw the stomach out, the distension can no longer communicate. You have these vagus nerves, number 10 cranial nerves that come down, that innervate the stomach, that basically are having a conversation. Every part of the body, chemically and mechanically connected to the other part, having this conversation that we throw off ourselves. We are creating this kind of difference. And the problem is, if you take a look at your Biology 101 book and you open it up, one of the first things it, it says is that all living things love homeostasis. They want balance. The body can heal itself when it can balance itself. And the thing is that we are the ones throwing it out of whack. And what we're going to do is come and show you what happens when we throw it out of whack, what we can do, and solutions. Yesterday, the part about telomeres, we just did this uh, with John Morrison, the Dean of Neurobiology at Mount Sinai. It's the cover of Trends in Neuroscience. It's also uh, 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 one of the covers of Nature. But one of the beauties of it is that you can clearly see this is one of the highest resolution neurons ever created. And what's happening is the smaller dendritic ends from cortical steroids from chronic stress are just eroding, just eroding. And so the telomere, the, 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 what was shown yesterday, here is an example of what's happening in the death of your, of your brain. And if you actually multiply that out, coupling that with aging, you can actually see the brain will actually shrink. You'll be able to see the sides of the, of the cerebral cortex just shrinking down. But the thing is about most of this information is that you can visualize information that allows you to see destruction, but you can also see the beauty of when, how the body can heal itself. That's the, that's the magic. The magic is empowering people with understanding through these visual stories that you can heal yourself. And if you can actually inspire people through this process of the healing process, you can show them what they can indeed do with their bodies through the proper treatment. Now here, we're given this magnificent cardiovascular system the day we're born, spring water running through our veins, pristine system. 
Here you will age. I'm not saying you're not going to age, but the thing is at this age, you could be running a triathlon. Here, your life will be severely handicapped or you'll be dead. So these are the kinds of things. We, I mean, we're not naive about this. 15% of the population wants to change, but doesn't know how. Maybe another 10% sitting on the fence. These are the kinds of things, though, that we believe using the nine visual rules of wellness and the tools that we are building uh, with them to implement them, to personalize them, that we can actually move those numbers. And with the exception of vaccines, that's probably more than anyone's done in any public policy in the history of mankind. So I look forward to speaking to anyone who wants to partner to use these tools to, to find the health of someone they love or someone they serve. Thank you.